Okay. All right. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to all those who've joined us online, as well as all of you who have joined us on the e-learning. I hope everybody's doing well. Yes, good. All right. OK. So we're moving into chapter chapter 3. Yes, we're moving into chapter 3. Let's just bow down and uh, pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you that you're bringing us, Lord, to a deeper, greater understanding about marriage. Lord, even as we uh, look into today's lesson, we pray that you will open our hearts. Help us, Lord, to see your wisdom, your truth in your word, and apply it, Lord, in our lives. Lord, I bless every marriage that is represented here. I pray that uh, your glory will shine forth, Lord, in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, a quick recap of what we did last week. So what did we do last week? What did we do in chapter 2? Preparation for marriage, OK. And there were preparation for marriage. Yes, Daniel. And how many points did we look at? Seven points, OK. And uh, quickly, what are those seven points? Emotional well, OK. Being the best you, emotional uh, well-being, then? Personal management, OK personal skills and that there was household management career finance and time management okay the fourth one is relationship skills okay yes Deepu thank you Daniel says sexual purity that was our next uh, sixth point okay in relationship skills what all did we look at relationship skills what all did we look at Communication, roles, uh, roles in marriage and in relationship with in-laws, okay, our parents, all right. So the fifth one was overcoming past abuse, addictions, or a home environment, okay. The sixth one, yes, was sexual purity. And the last one was calling, spiritual calling, and uh, yeah, Christian calling. Okay, wonderful, great. Okay, so today we're going to look at chapter three. And if you're following me in your books, it's uh, page 23. We're uh, looking at how do we make a choice. All right. Now, this entire chapter uh, has biblical guidelines or even practical guidelines of how you make a choice of a life partner. Right. Now, if some of you here or listening to me have already made the choice okay you need to be faithful in that choice okay even if you observe that certain expectations or uh, things did not match if you are already married you stay faithful in the choice okay um, now we when when we understand that you know because there are many cultures that are present uh, represented here right here in class, uh, maybe on online as well as over the e-learning, we, we may understand that, uh, that the context of how we make a choice are very different, right? Depending on the kind of culture or, or country or um, uh, place we represent, maybe some of these things or some of the uh, recommendations may not be completely culturally uh, acceptable but we we're looking at basic principles that we really need to follow okay so uh, we we also need to understand especially that uh, there can be different kind of influences it can be your parental influence it can be your cultural influence or societal influence in the way that you choose someone to to marry uh, when that is there you know like for example uh, maybe dating is not something that is very prevalent among probably different parts of our country or maybe more to the to the rural areas dating is not a concept that is well accepted okay or even talking before marriage 
may not be something that is well accepted. So it's it's something it's it's a person that maybe a society or a family may choose for you, and you just need to go with with that choice. In such cases, uh, commit that to the Lord and trust that the Lord will work out things for you. Okay, to remember that God is bigger than all of our our constraints, our social or cultural constraints. Okay, all right. Now, even as so, we're going to be looking, like we said, in uh, those those practical and biblical guidelines on how you make a choice. So one of the um, things that we need to look at is uh, how to how can people exist together? How can two people exist together? So I want to bring about the word called compatibility. What do you what what do you sense that meaning is? You must have heard it. What do you think the meaning of that word is? Compatibility. Okay, so, so uh, uh, compatibility is where someone where people can exist mutually because they have common maybe interests or likes or dislikes. Okay, anything else? Sorry, it's like match the following. <laughs> okay, so there may be uh, differences, but compatibility is how you come together in agreement come to understand those differences and coming together in a place of understanding or even using those differences in order to work together as a team. That's what compatibility may mean. It's not like an exact match, right? Like when you go to the shop to get an exact color shirt for your pant, it's not that way, you know, but you're looking to see what will what will work together? Maybe with a black shirt, a white pant goes out other way around, right? But it's it's looking to see how could two people exist together, knowing the differences, coming to a place of understanding. So that's what we're looking at compatibility, and the Bible is uh, uh, talks about it. If we look at a couple of verses, like in Amos three three, it says, "Do two people walk hand in hand if they aren't going to the same place? You need to have a certain goal together, certain agreement, a place of understanding together to go to a certain play, a certain goal. Or uh, Mark 3.25 it says, if a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. So compatibility is all about to coming in mutual understanding and agreement, even when there are differences. OK? So we're going to look at um, four areas of compatibility. All right? So the first one is spiritual compatibility now again over here uh, it, the 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 uh, what we're going to look at is that it's just not enough or not sufficient for people to be just be believers right you may find uh, a lot of uh, people who are believers but it is also important to go that uh, extra or that necessary um, um, uh, aspect to understand if the person has the same kind of passion, discipline, maybe commitment uh, to the Lord like you may have. All right. So yes, there may be believers, but they may be just Sunday going Christians, right? And not really uh, having a passion to learn the word or a commitment to, uh, you know, to worship or a commitment to go deep into um, uh, you know, things of the spirit. It, they may be just people who are, like we said, Sunday Christians. So although they may be believers, to really understand the depth of this is important. You know, How much of time do they spend on worship, devotion? Do they serve in their local church? Uh, how do they think about ministry? How do they think about spiritual calling? All of that also matters okay so it's just not enough and sufficient to marry a believer but also to really look in depth on how their disciplines of uh, worship or disciplines of, of of their prayer time or their relationship with god is all right so that's one that is spiritual maturity uh, spiritual compatibility good is that okay do you mind putting on the fan thank you all right. Okay. The next one is emotional and um, 
intellectual compatibility, you can reduce it a little bit if it's too high. You can just on one, just so there's some circulation. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. All right, so emotional and intellectual compatibility, OK? Um, what do we look in this? We're looking at things that matter to the soul. Now, when you're getting married to somebody, you're not just marrying them based on the way they look, right? Or based on what they possess. How, what, what are you actually, not what, who are you actually marrying? You're actually marrying a person with emotions, a person with will, a person with a mind, with thoughts and understanding and attitudes. That's, that's a person who you're marrying, right? You're just not marrying like a dummy person, right? They come with a whole lot of uh, experiences, thoughts, emotions, determination. They come with that, all right? And how do you find out whether there is a matching, there is a compatibility, OK? Like, for example, um, uh, you know, are you all able to connect on an emotional level? Do you find that the person understands you? Do you find that the person can be empathetic when you're talking about something? Are they willing to listen to you? Are they willing to uh, share with your burden, with your sorrow? Or do they only like talking about themselves? Right? Then they, they don't really consider about talking about your feelings or things. So is that is that a place that you would want to see the person you're getting married to? Okay, or uh, are you able to really understand each other's emotions? Now we need to know that yes, this will change in time as you get to know people. It will change. It will become different. It will be. It will evolve. Nevertheless, uh, it's only through conversations that you can understand if if you know you can build that sense of friendship or that intimacy. So let me ask you, I can do are you all friends with everybody? Good friends with everybody? No. So how do you choose that? Yes, the so people who you can connect with, people who you can, you know, know that uh, understand you and you understand them. That's how you make that. So similarly, even in marriage, um, even in marriage, that's that is extremely important to connect with emotional. Uh, to be able to be compatible, match on an emotional level. Okay, so Daniel asks, how do we know how to know the emotional need of a partner? All right, so when we look at, if you're going to look at broad emotional needs, and I want to put forth the question back to you, what are emotional needs? Caring. Okay, so for someone to know that you care for them, all right, sharing. OK, Lucy says, sharing where you're able to share your life's experiences. So when you, li when you share your life experience, what are you doing? You're inviting them into your world, right? OK, and so then you know that ah, the other person knows me, the other person understands. OK, sharing, caring, spending time. All right, so when you spend time, what's happening? Yeah, you get to know what they like, what they don't like, when they get angry, when they're happy. You get to know a little bit more about them, right? Uh, what else? Or when when you're going through a difficulty, uh, what happens? You're hoping to have someone to share and to, to lean on, to get support from, right? So all of the emotional needs have to do with your need to feel loved, need to feel accepted, Right? If you don't, if you don't feel accepted by your friends, would you want to? If they're always criticizing you, what you wear, what you do, what you say, do you feel comfortable? You don't, right? So love, acceptance, a sense of security, a sense of belonging, and that's why you see in groups of people, they feel very belonged. And if you, I'm sure there are groups, no, even in college. There is no. Uh, so you may feel more comfortable in your group than the other group, right? Or a sense of significance. Okay, I am important to the uh, to the person. Now these are what we look at emotion. Uh, sorry, universal needs uh, of of a person, and each of us have it. 
but we may have it at different degrees. Some may have it a lot more, some may have it a lot lesser. Nevertheless, it is something that each person needs. The need to feel loved, the need to be accepted, the need to feel secure or belong, the need to feel significant. Okay, So these are emotional needs that may have. I hope that answers your question, Daniel. OK, the next one we go to is physical compatibility. What is physical compatibility? Huh? Yeah, so you should be attracted to the person you want to get married to. All right, and there's nothing wrong in being physically attracted. However, you don't keep that, um, you know, you, that doesn't take significant uh, imp it takes importance, but not that you're going only with that, that the person who you marry must look like this. So you must remember that beauty and appearance is will fade. It's they're not going, we're all not going to stay all handsome and pretty like this. No. Over time, we will all wrinkle, we will all gray, we will all fade. Right? So, however, yes, it is important to feel that sense of attraction. Okay, to someone who you're getting married. And the, la the last one is compatibility in life's calling. So what do you want to do in life? Uh, and, and that, I think, is a very important thing to consider while you're choosing a partner. Because you may have something that God is calling you to do, and maybe the person you're considering may have something exactly opposite. And I think I've given these examples before. You may want to serve uh, in ministry, maybe in a rural area, but the partner you want to marry wants to fly, wants to travel, wants to go, you know, do things. Uh, maybe they have business skills and they want to really build their business. So this sometimes doesn't what match. It doesn't match because it's it's not it's not giving maybe you the freedom to do what God's calling you to do. So these are some things that we need to use wisdom for when we are making the choice. So what are those areas of compatibility? What are the areas of compatibility? Physical, then emotional, spiritual, life's calling. OK, so emotional also means intellectual. I, I think I, I forgot to mention that. Intellectual is, you know, having a certain wavelength to discuss certain things. Um, maybe you like to talk about maybe world affairs or current affairs, right? Maybe it's your passion to talk about that, and you find a person who's not interested in any of this, right? Now, it's not a bad thing, but how can you intellectually converse with one another, right? So to find that kind of a match is is why maybe people tell you, you know, find someone who is equally educated like you are, because there is that intellectual vibe that happens. Okay, so, but of course, these are only certain guidelines. Uh, the 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 basic idea is to know if you all can work together in agreement. Maybe all things don't may not match completely. Nevertheless, you look at what are the best aspects of agreement and oneness you can walk in. Okay, all right. Okay, so. Watch out for warning signs. And this is an uh, uh, important thing that you need to consider, that when you are making a choice, you need to look for certain warning signs. What are warning signs? What are warning signs? Huh? Something that is alarming, disturbing. Someone else said something. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember your name. Uh, Kom Komal, yes. Yes, Komal, once again. Indication for the future. Is that what you said? Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. So a warning sign is telling you that something will, will can become a problem. Right? Yes or no? Like, look at it physically. If you, uh, if you have, uh, let's say you're going to have, maybe you have diabetes, you're always feeling hungry. It's telling you that if you don't take care of it, something's going to become a problem, right? So exact. So that's similar. Warning signs are those that tell you that there can be 
potential areas of problem that will come up. So what are those things that you may need to consider? How do you know that there could be potential uh, areas of um, uh, difficulty? One is if the person does not show maturity. Okay, if there are signs of immaturity and they are not really um, uh, open to take on responsibilities for marriage. What would give me an example of that? Huh? Okay, not postponing marriage and saying, okay, I'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Okay, that could be a sign. All right. What are the signs? Huh? Of immaturity. Well, give me an example of immaturity. Online students, you could also pitch in. Not decisive on the person. Okay. They're not making a final choice. They're not saying, okay, I'll go ahead with this. All right. Or maybe a person who's not working and thinks he doesn't have to work. Yeah. So no responsibility. Maybe taking the um, support of the parents. Right. All the, all that shows signs of immaturity. Right. Or saying yeah. that. And they're not showing very very. When they're actually not doing anything, saying, oh, I build a big house, I'll have a big car, we'll go to this place and go to that place when they don't even have a job. Signs of immaturity? Yes? Correct? Okay. Next one is signs of lack of preparation. That is, these seven areas that we spoke about, they're really not focusing on preparation. They're not serious about doing these things. Like we said, of com of emotional health, communication, uh, household management, time management, patience. patience. Okay, so all of this showing that they are not really working towards it is a sign of immaturity. Okay, next one is a sign of character weakness. That are there significant struggles that they're going through? Maybe it's addictions. Maybe it is uh, difficult relationships with other people significant emotional burdens that they're carrying that if they take into marriage can become a real problem all right so that is signs of character weakness signs of parental control what is that the parents are too uh, yeah too de uh, too depend i mean they are too dependent on the parents or the parents are making every small decision for the person that shows again they're not ready to get into marriage. Next is signs of parental dependence. That is, the person is still dependent on the parents and always financially, physically, emotionally. Uh, they're not able to move away from parents. And lastly, uh, it's important to uh, think, uh, to understand what significant people in your life think about the person you're going to choose, whether it is your parents or your family or your spiritual mentors, what do they say about the person who you're considering? So these are some things that you will need to consider. OK? All right, are we all here? Right. You should pay big attention to this, especially those who aren't married. OK? All right, now, what is it that you expect and what can you give? All right? So. Uh, I just want to bring all bring your attention to uh, to these verses. Uh, can someone read it out? Romans fourteen five and James one eight. Can somebody read it out? Romans fourteen five. Some people think that a certain day is more important than other days, while others think that all days are the same. We should we each should firmly make up our own minds. James Excellent. one eight. He is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, so something that this verse, even though this ver these verses do not talk about marriage, something it says is in the first one, Romans fourteen five. It says, "Make up your own, make up your own mind." Good morning. Ah, make up your own mind. So, what is it, what is it saying that whenever you're making a choice about something, right? God has given you that freedom to choose. But when you are making that choice, you must make up your mind. Don't be here and there. Don't be in a place always saying, I don't know. Who do you, what do you, 
who do you what would you like to see in the person you marry i don't know when will you marry i don't know how long are you going to stay like this i don't know right so be decisive come to a place of making a decision so how can you start how can you start bye so first think think about the kind of person you want to marry right god has given each one of us what yes a mind it is god didn't put that to sleep he's given each one of us an ability to think to reason to understand right so first of all if you have prepared yourself and you're in that place you know the kind of person you are and then begin to think about what you would like to see or who you, uh, what kind of a person or qualities you want in the person you're going to get married okay do not be foolish in especially in things like, ah i can't work so i will get someone who has a well paying job so they will work that is what signs of immaturity right or i can't take care of my parents so i will bring someone who will do all the work at home or take care of my elderly, whatever right so it's important to be wise and really understand what is it that god is uh, god is putting in your heart about the person that you that you would like to marry so there's nothing wrong about writing a list all the young men and women who are listening nothing wrong in writing a list about what kind of a person you want to marry so homework okay go back and write just follow these questions there are some wonderful questions that are there what kind of spouse would you like what are the qualities and traits that are important for you what is nice what is not critical what are your expectations of marriage what kind of a home do you want to build begin to visualize begin to dream i'm asking you to dream okay so homework all right because you know if when you start and, and i think there are a number of people who would who will give you an example of people who have actually written down and started praying about what they wanted to see and how god's answered that prayer okay so god wants you to do that don't don't feel it's okay god whatever you bring right god wants you to be involved in that decision so homework is write down your expectations like i said those of you who are married it's okay let it be those of you who aren't married so many of my children are here okay write that down uh do you have a choice sorry gertrude what did you mean by that question do you have a choice of the person to marry is that what you were asking uh sister i was i'm married already so i said do i have a choice for this not able to hear let's see sorry gertrude we can't can't hear you ah uh, okay gertrude can you say that again uh i said do i have a choice because i'm already married <laughs> oh okay uh, uh, yeah that's what i yeah. mentioned that yeah. if you're already married uh you don't have a choice you stay faithful to the one you yeah. are married okay <laughs> right. okay thank you okay so um yeah so this is something that i'd really like each one of you to do you don't have to share it here but i i i recommend that each of you do this okay let's see if there's a question or something someone's talking with you please tell me okay all right so the next important thing and, and often we hear i hear this question is there uh is there that one person somewhere in this whole wide world that is kept only for me yes there is 
Okay, we will look at what scripture says. So is there that one person? If I miss that person, khatab, gone for life. Okay, so let's let's look at an example. Okay, and um, we're going to look at um, at the story of how Abraham uh, asked his servant to find a wife for Isaac. Isaac. Okay, so let's read that story. Uh, I'm going to read it. Uh, um, yeah, let me read it so that you know we have a have an have an understanding. So I, it's re I'm I'm reading from Genesis 24, 1 to 15. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord blessed him in everything he did. He said to his servant who was in charge of all that he had, place your hand between my thighs and make a vow. I want you to make a vow in the name of the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not choose a wife for my son from the people here in Canaan. You must go back to the country where I was born and get a wife for my son from among my relatives. But the servant asked, what if the young woman will not leave home to come with me to this land? Shall I send your son back to the land you came from? Abraham answered, Make sure that you don't send my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, brought me from the home of my father and from the land of my relatives, and he solemnly promised me that he would give this land to my descendants. He will send his angels before you so that you can get a wife there for my son. If the young woman is not willing to come with you, what does it say? If the young woman is not willing to come with you. So what does that mean? That she had a choice? She had a choice to say no? Yes? Okay. You will be free from this promise, but you must not, under any circumstances, take my son back there. So the servant put his hand between the thighs of Abraham, his master, made a vow uh, to do what Abraham had asked. The servant who was in charge of Abraham's property took his camels, went to the city, and lived in northern Mesopotamia. When he arrived, he made the camels kneel at the well outside. It was the afternoon, the time when women came to came out to get water. This Here he prays. He said, Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and keep your promise to my master. Here I'm at the well where the young woman of the city will be coming to get water. Now, notice in verse 14, what is he doing? He is asking God for guidance. He's asking the Lord for help and for guidance. So he says, I will say to one of them, please lower your jar and let me have a drink. And I will also what uh, uh, drink. Uh, uh, if she says drink, and I will also bring water for your camels. May she be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. If this happens, I will know that you have kept your promise to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca arrived. So what do you see over here? Let's look at some of the things that we see here. So Genesis 24, 8, as I said, uh, it says, if the woman is not willing to come with you. So what does this indicate? That people have a choice. God has given people a choice. And Rebecca, sorry, free will. Yes. And Rebecca could have said no. Yes. If she saw this and, and, and she figured that she was not happy with it, she could have said no. Yeah. But what do you see um, the servant doing? Here, the servant is depending on God. And he's asking for guidance. And there was one way that he was choosing to discern. He was saying, God, if this all of this happens, I will know that there is favor. Right, so there was he was looking for a, a a way to discern, and he was also looking at her as a as a person. He was watching her, right? What was he doing? What What do you think she, he must have learned about her when she did all that she did? She watered the camels. Uh, she sorry, she watered him. She watered the camels. She patiently did what. Uh, not just what was asked, but much more than what was asked. So what was he looking at? He was observing her character, the kind of person that she is, right? And he was also asking the Lord for guidance. So there was there was an observation that the servant was was doing over here. All right, let's let's move on. 
uh, Genesis 24, 21, 26 to 27, it says, The man kept watching her in silence to see if the Lord had given him success. Right? Watching her move to see if, if she was suited. Then the man knelt and worshipped and said, he said, Praise the Lord, the God of my father, Abraham, who has faithfully kept his promise to my master. The Lord has led me straight to my master's relatives. So we see that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that he recognized that there was a leading of the Lord. There was a leading of the Holy Spirit in this kind of a situation, in this kind of a matchmaking that was happening okay now what happens after that uh, did a uh, did uh, abraham's servant pull her away and go what did she do let's read uh, genesis 24 49 to 51 now if you intend to fulfill your responsibility towards my master and treat him fairly please tell me if not say so and i will decide what to do so the servant goes to rebecca's house why in order to ask permission from her, her family whether they were willing to send her. Right? So he didn't, although he had the guidance, although the sign was met, although he was led by the Holy Spirit, he did, just didn't make a decision and pull her and leave. He went home. And what does he say here? Please tell me, if not, say so, and I will decide what to do. So even the family could have said no? Yes? Okay. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, Since this matter comes from the Lord, it is not for us to make a decision. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go. Let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord himself has said. So there was permission from their ends. Right? So he did not override the will of God. He did not use spiritual force. You know, God told me, God gave me the sign, you have to be the one who marries my master's servant, the master's son, right? And this is a, uh, a reminder for us. Maybe you have got a dream about somebody you want to marry. And you have approached the person and said, God said in a dream that you are the one to marry me. And she says, I don't see, I don't think so. And then you use the force, no, God told me. And you will be the one. You can't ma marry anybody else. What is that? Force. What do we see over here? He didn't use force. He was open to knowing what the family thought. Let's go on. Genesis 24, 54 to 59. Then Abraham's servant and the men with him ate and drank, spent the night there. When they got up in the morning, he said, let me go back to my, ma uh, to my master. But uh, Rebecca's brother and her mother said, let us stay with us a week or 10 days and then she may go. But he said, don't make us stay. The Lord has made my journey a success. Let me go back to my master. They answered, let's call her and find out what she has to say. So they asked Rebecca, do you want to go with this man? Yes, she answered. So they let Rebecca and her old family and her old family servant go with Abraham's servant with and his men. So remember, at those days, you don't have a bus to go to Tamil Nadu, right? If it is, it's a journey. It's a journey of a couple of days to go. So it wasn't easy in this way. So do you see that this decision was a final decision? And Re Rebecca sees all of that and she agrees. So what, is it, what does it say? So ultimately, Rebecca had to make that choice. And, and so we say, and, and so we understand that, that she ha had to be the one to decide. So because she could have said no, she recognized and responded to that. So what do we look from here? We understand that there isn't that one appointed person. God will, can bring people to you, but you are the one who finally needs to make a choice. And it is your decision. And so that's why the verse that says, make up your mind. Right? So if you have decided to marry someone, they are the appointed ones for you. Not you wait in and look and see, okay, where is that appointed one? Keep looking, keep finding, keep keeps, okay, that person should fall on my lap. But when you make that decision, 
when when you go through that process of finding the person who's compatible with you when you make the choice that person becomes the appointed one for you like like gertrude you you asked do i have a choice the one you've married is god's appointed one for you and stay faithful and grow through that okay oh uh, yeah quickly two questions ma'am in the passage that we've read abraham knows that he's sending his uh, eldest servant for this uh, task the old servant seeks god for a sign and he specifies that you know if she responds in such and such yeah. fashion that is an indication mm -hmm. rebecca does so but in this passage do we see that rebecca is aware that the sign is intended towards marriage or she is just responding and then we see the she she part. is not aware right okay. she like she is coming yeah she is not aware in the first part Huh. but towards the just that we read you know that 54 to 59 okay. where it says rebecca agreed that she will go with this man right so there is she aware that it is referring to going for a marriage she uh, yeah of course huh. okay i'm sure she is okay, okay. right because uh, he he explains it no in the earlier part <clears throat> um the servant explains that it's not here in this passage okay. it, it's he's explained it that okay. you know he's come okay. to search for a thing he's huh. told that and go okay. to my Uh, all of that is not written in this Got in it. these verses Got but it. it's there Got in the it. earlier passage and so she is aware uh, second follow up question is uh, when we seek god for a sign uh, is it not uh, it is good to seek god and wait on the lord for him to approve so that we have clarity but it, it, on the flip side it is it does it not mean that we are putting him for a test like you know god you assure me again reassure me kind of a thing so it's okay to ask god for a sign if you have done part of your homework which is knowing what you what you are looking for right like you have your expectations you you know what the kind of person you're looking for and maybe someone puts someone is there that you may be interested in asking the lord for a sign is is a good thing now a sign could also be i am approaching the person and saying you know i'm i'm considering marriage and uh would would you be interested would can we have a conversation that could also be a sign it doesn't have to be something like this all the time you know that she should come in a red color dress and then uh, okay that's about it needn't be that right so how can we use our reasoning and wisdom while they're doing that so you should remember that in this cultural time this sign was a was a um, be, because because of the distance of, of people not having these kind of conversations this was a was a was a good yeah more uh, what is a substantial sign right but maybe in our time we have conversation we we can open and and discuss maybe something like this was in there so let's not look at signs like you know that are, that are always so far fetched that's what i said a girl coming in a red color dress in a red car with red shoes that's a girl to for me to marry right Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions? Anyone else has any questions? No questions. No questions. Okay. So should there be one and one and only one? You may differ. That's okay. We can have differing thoughts and opinions. But through through the story, the one and only one becomes after you make that choice. Okay. So so here we we see that people. Uh, definitely can um uh can make a choice and then really accept the person as the appointed one that god has uh kept for you so god has given you the ability to reason to discern to understand and when you are doing that when you are actually seeking in that way that person becomes the appointed one for you okay so the one that you choose with the guidance of god with the with the prompting of the holy spirit with maybe signs that you are able to see with the compatibility that you are able to look at becomes the one uh, that you get married to all right okay all right um so there is an example here okay uh, just so that i think it's a good example to think about and it's it's partly one of the examples i gave so it says um let's say um John okay I'm, I'm using the words here there no Johns here no oh, okay we won't use John Matthew no Matthew here right okay so Matthew likes a girl called Mary all right and uh, yes both of them love the lord believers in the lord Matthew has a 
dream, like I said, dream, and goes to Mary and says, I have a dream that you will, I, I need you to marry me. But Mary is very clear that that's not the leading that she has. Okay, she probably has uh, another leading or she wants to marry somebody else. So what should uh, Matthew do? Huh? What should Matthew do? Ask Go God ahead. for guidance. Louder, louder, Asap, you're right. Come on. Yes, go ahead and look for somebody else. Right? And not stay fixated at uh, this person because he feels that, uh, you know, that, that Mary didn't hear right. Okay? And to move on. So to remember that, again, that what is marriage not about? Marriage is not about finding the right person. Okay? It's about doing the things that are right to build a good marriage. Okay? Yes, you have to use wisdom when you're looking for the person. Don't be immature to say, oh, whoever I find, marriage will be great. That's not what it means. But it's not about being so centric about, you know, it has to fit all of this and only then it, it's that. Or, you know, it's this person and only that person. So uh, be willing to uh, hear from God and go with making a decision and going in in staying building that relationship okay all right okay we just have two minutes any any examples i am sorry any questions i thought there will be more questions in this you can be free to ask it's a it's a learning for everybody here Vimal? Sister, I have a question. No. I'm... no. Sister, okay. can you hear me? Uh, John? No question? Asapu? Sugad? Nelson? Diksha? Ask. You'll ask in the break. Okay. Any other, anyone else in the class? Uh, has a question. Can you hear? No, I can't hear her. Gertrude has a question. Mm -hmm. You can you can listen to me and tell me. Just a minute, Gertrude. I can't I can't hear. Yeah, go ahead, sister. I mean, from my experience, I feel that uh, the today generation they like the. Uh, partner first and then they decide on marriage without uh, depending on God's uh, 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 I mean God's word or you know whether it is the right person for them and mm -hmm. so that's why I feel that many marriages don't work mm. they're not okay. depending uh, on God okay so uh, do you have a follow up question I know sister OK, you just made a comment. Yeah. OK, so uh, Gertrude said that uh, nowadays, young people choose a person and then decide to get married without really seeking the guidance of God. So she made a comment. And so would you like to say something to encourage young people, Gertrude? Yes, sister, because uh, from my experience now, after be being a believer, I also have made mistakes in life that so many things I have done in my own strength and mm. not dependent on God and so my children. So my advice is, you know, to seek seriously for God's anointing, his word, and then make the decision. Okay. So she's saying uh, to seek God his word as you're making the decision. Because in her personal life, she's had many challenges and struggles, and she desires that you we don't go through all of that. OK? All right. Thank you, Gertrude. All right, we'll, we'll stop for a break of 10 minutes and come back.